Realism is the artistic representation of subjects with an accurate and truthful depiction of their natural form. How does realism improve life and one's character and feelings? Our innovator today is John Hood, who has been an artist all his life. I don't paint for others, I just paint for myself. And, and I've been artistic all my life, uh, trained as an architect, and I practiced architecture for 40 years. And I always knew I wanted to paint. It's such a gift to me. He's dedicated to improving his skills in the art of painting and keep realism alive. I sign all my paintings with, I have learned to look, mm -hmm. now I yearn to see. I think that as an artist, you develop a trained eye. And that trained eye opens up the world to you in amazing fashion. This is Bay Area Innovators, and I'm your host, Steve Ispas. John, welcome to our program. Thank you. Well, glad to have you here. So, you're a realist painter. You have your works exhibited in galleries in San Francisco. I would like to ask you, how do you feel when you paint? What's the feeling that comes out? Good question. Uh, I find that um, I'm consumed. The painting and I have a dialogue that is intense. And uh, frankly, it's obsessive. Uh, when I'm painting, uh, I listen to classical music. The family leaves me alone, and I just feel it, it's a beautiful experience because I believe that um, the painting has a mind of its own, that it talks back to me, as, and so we have this partnership. And of course, the painting can't talk yet. Um, that's how it feels to me. When I'm preparing for a show or I'm working a lot, I will paint for several hours, and then I'll take the painting upstairs and put it on the mantle where the best light is and I will stare at it for 20 minutes and then I'll turn my back and I'll walk as far away as I can be from the painting and then I'll turn quickly to look. And what I've learned is the first thing you see is the defect, where it's the fault. It's the area that, you need to, uh, that I need to work on to improve. And it's, um, my family laughs at me about it, but uh, it's very effective. And then I take the painting back down and and work on it uh, some more, and it's a wonderful experience. I love it. You said you listen to classical music. Mm. Is it during painting or before, or and, and what kind of music? I wear headphones because I like to to play it loud, and um, it's uh, classical like uh, Yo-Yo Ma's Bach concertos, Mozart, all, all the classic wonderful composers, also um, ballads, Cheryl Crow. Uh, the Beatles, um, mm -hmm. and so I have an eclectic mix, but they all tend, John Lennon, they tend to be rhythmic and gets me into a flow. And when I'm working on big areas, backgrounds, my hand starts moving with the, the flow of the music, and it's, uh, it's very entertaining to me. So I was going to ask you if you like get some inspiration from the music, or how do you get the inspiration that you it, um so the music sets a mood. The first thing I do when I sit at the easel is I plan the area I'm going to work, and I make sure that I have the colors that I'm hopeful for. And picking colors is a blending process. Um, I sit quietly for a minute and just stare at it. And then I make the first stroke, and usually I have to redo it because uh, it's, uh, I'm too picky. Over time, uh, it's, it's one stroke, and then it's 50. The whole time. I feel elated. I just feel, uh, I feel wonderful to be able to sit there and have, um, uh, it, it's such a gift to me that um, I can paint some. And I don't paint for others, I just paint for myself. And, and the fact that they're, uh, some of the paintings are successful is, 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 is a bonus. I've been artistic all my life. Mm -hmm. uh, I uh, trained as an architect and I practiced architecture for 40 years. Uh, and I always knew I wanted to paint. And my mother f told me I could do anything I wanted to do, and so I believed that. And I was hooked, uh, the way the color went down. Watercolors, we'll, we'll look at some watercolors later, uh, the colors are very transparent, and so it's, they're really very delicate, very immediate, whereas uh, acrylics and oils are luscious, and um, they blend well. And you, you have time to, to work with them, whereas watercolor, it, 
it's if it takes more than three hours, you're you're making it mud. Research shows that realism paintings can enhance emotions, well-being, you know, productivity, and all mm -hmm. of this. Did you experience any of this? I'm captivated by looking at art. When uh, my wife and I travel, uh, we go to all the big places, and my wife's a, a photographer, and so sometimes she'll have work in, in the cities that we go to, and so the, I go to the museums, and she does her work. And just standing in front of a painting, it's an emotional interaction, and I can picture what the paint, the artist was thinking. I can picture it, and the anger and anger in the eyes or the the sun as it rises and Gustav Klimt is one of my favorite painters from the Art Nouveau period. One of his famous paintings is called The Wedding and it's two figures intertwined um, with this beautiful mosaic of a pattern and it just it looks like there's so much love in the painting and it's it doesn't fit into the category category of realism, uh, realistic painting but you know exactly what he was talking about. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and because of the period, um, it's, a, it's an amazing painting. Tell us more about your favorite painters or, or role models that yeah. guided you. Well, favorite painters and role models are two different things, so I'll, I'll talk about favorite painters for, for a minute. Uh, in current day, um, I think the best painting of, of our lifetime is Gerhard Richter. And the reason I say that is he can paint in any medium, uh, realist, abstract, um, mixed um, landscapes, and uh, the, the paintings are just amazing. And so the fact that he's so versatile, I really admire. Um, I, I like that I can paint in watercolor and oil um, because it, it, it keeps me fresh. So Gerhard Richter is one of my one of my heroes. In Rembrandt, how can you not like Rembrandt? And the, his his uh, the way he uses light. Um, he was one of the one of the first people to use light in the way that he did. Caravaggio is another. Klimt and Degas. Degas um, uh, from uh, from the Impressionist period. He said more or less you find a subject that you like and you paint it hundreds of times. And so that's why you see so many, he painted multiple, you know, hundreds of uh, ballet paintings. Mm -hmm. And so he was, he totally engrossed himself in, um, in the ballet scene. So those are the older ones. And then um, John Singer Sargent, huge fan, uh, because he also painted in oils and watercolor, although he's famous for his watercolors. And then Winslow Homer, another man who painted both in watercolor and oil. I happen to have a friend that, that uh, has a studio, uh, their house is right next to where um, Winslow painted, and mm -hmm. I was able to sit at my friend's house and paint scenes that I can imagine Winslow sitting on the, sitting on the rocks painting mm -hmm. at the same time, and it, it chills down my body, this famous person. Um, you see the same thing that he was yes, looking at. Yes, and, and uh, if you look at some of his paintings, he, he likes to paint water a lot. And uh, in Maine, where he lived, or where his studio was, the water is uh, of a certain color. Mm -hmm. And the water has a certain violence to it. And mm -hmm. it's, a, it's aggressive on the coast. And he captured that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm, I'm so impressed with that. Um, so those are, those are really... Uh, uh, the best group, I would say.